All right, let's get this out of the way first. I am beyond excited to exclusively reveal that for the first time since 2012, Sega is currently developing a brand new unannounced Super Monkey Ball game. Now, I have a lot more details to share with you about this unannounced game, including an interview with somebody involved in the project, but in order for that to make sense, I need to explain how I came across this info. First, the backstory. Last year, I put together a short documentary about my hunt for the anonymous man who voiced the announcer in the original Super Monkey Ball games. You can watch that video by clicking right up here. Now, nobody knew who that voice belonged to. He was not found anywhere in the Monkey Ball credits, and all we had to go on were internet rumors. Anyways, Long story very short, one quick trip to Japan later and I finally found the guy, a voice actor living in Tokyo by the name of Brian Matt. Ready? Go! Now when I say nobody knew who this voice was, I mean nobody. Not the fans of Monkey Ball, not any of my contacts at Sega, not even Brian himself. And that might sound surprising, but keep in mind Brian has been working as a voice actor in Japan for decades, doing multiple voice acting jobs every single week. So. It's understandable that one specific role he performed 19 years ago might not stick out in his memory. At any rate, once Brian heard the voice lines of Super Monkey Ball, he was able to confirm that yes, that was his voice and all the memories came flooding back. So fast forward to 2020. In the time since we uncovered Brian's identity, the man has really connected with the Super Monkey Ball community. Even just looking at the comments he's left on my YouTube videos since that documentary was published, it's clear that Brian was deeply touched to discover that this voice acting gig he took back in 2001 is still resonating with so many people all these years later. The whole thing was just a feel good story and I thought that the story ended there, but it turns out that was just the beginning of my story with Brian. See, in March of this year, I published another Super Monkey Ball video called The Rise and Fall of Super Monkey Ball, which you can watch right up here, in which I outlined the steep decline of Monkey Ball's quality after those first two games. And to most fans of Monkey Ball, this was not breaking news. You can pretty easily draw a line between the first few Monkey Ball games, which were these challenging, pure, minimalistic arcade platform games, and then everything that came after, which with few exceptions was riddled with guardrails, overly easy level design, and loaded with tacked on mechanics like a jump button, enemies, character stats, boss battles. I don't want to repeat myself too much here. I go into this in the other video, but suffice to say somewhere along the line, Sega lost the plot when it came to Super Monkey Ball. And for decades, Monkey Ball fans have been clamoring for the games to return to their former glory. Now, I don't like making negative videos, and I wanted to end that video on a hopeful note. So at the end, I highlighted one specific man who could potentially right the ship. Sega employee Masao Shirosaki. Shirosaki, who oversaw last year's remake of the notoriously mediocre Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, has revealed in interviews that his favorite games in the series are Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2, those first two. In other words, it appeared that for the first time in ages, we had an inside man an ally within Sega who understood what made Monkey Ball great to begin with. Now that was promising, but equally promising was this, a poll posted by the official Super Monkey Ball Twitter account asking fans, quote, what if we make a Monkey Ball next? Predictably, that poll had two huge frontrunners, people who want a remake of the first two games and people who want a brand new Monkey Ball game. Still, to be totally candid, the possibility of a new Monkey Ball game in our day and age felt like a total long shot. I mean, after a decade and a half of disappointment, it turns out it's a little hard to get your hopes up for anything. That was until I got a very mysterious message from Brian Matt. It was March 6, 2020, the day after I released my documentary about Monkey Ball's decline. I had posted about my new video on Instagram, and that evening I picked up my phone and saw the following message from Brian himself, which, with his permission, I'll share with you now. Quote, love it. Patience, my little I.I. Chan. Things will happen with a sweet little twist. I'm excited and loved your video. You have lit a fire of interest a while back, and I thank you for that. Now, to be honest, I was equal parts excited and baffled by this message. I had no clue what Brian could have meant by, quote, things will happen. It sounded like he was hinting at something, but Brian hadn't been the Super Monkey Ball announcer in nearly 18 years. So what could he be talking about? Now, around this same time, Brian began posting cryptic messages to Instagram that were teasing, well, something. In one post, Brian said that, quote, something is in the works, and another one screenshotted my documentary about Monkey Ball's decline and added the caption, quote, don't give up on the Monkey Ball series. You're going to be very surprised. Patience. Now, a few Sega fan publications like Sega Bits picked up on Brian's Instagram posts and ran with them as news stories. But I still couldn't help but be skeptical about this. It seemed too good to be true. 
I thought maybe Brian had been exaggerating, that perhaps he'd been recording some Monkey Ball voiceover on spec to try and get Sega's attention and get them excited about maybe including him in a theoretical future game someday. In other words, I thought Brian was going off on his own, trying to generate hype for a new Monkey Ball project. But Brian didn't stop posting about Monkey Ball. This was not just one single throwaway comment. It was a series of cryptic clues and messages that began to paint a really interesting picture. Eventually, I could not contain my curiosity, so in April, I reached out to Brian and asked him point blank, what is going on here? So I waited. And waited. And eventually... I got a reply from Brian. Hello, Nick. Sorry for the delay. Sega, we have done one paid recording. I did this with a female narrator, but we are on hold right now. The government here is a mess with yes, no Olympics and yes, no lockdown. We will chat soon, but that is all I can offer at this point. Let me know. This email stunned me. Up until this point, I had hesitated to believe that this could be real, but According to Brian, Sega had actually hired and paid him on at least one occasion to record voice work for a brand new Super Monkey Ball game. According to Brian, there was a new Super Monkey Ball project in the works, and most fascinating of all, Sega had apparently sought the involvement of the original game's original announcer, a man whose entire existence we had only managed to unearth a few months ago. At this point, I knew that I needed to speak to Brian directly, so out of options and desperate for some sort of resolution, I asked him for an interview. He said yes. Now, one quick note before we go into this interview. As is standard, Sega had Brian sign a NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. So you'll notice in this interview that Brian has to be pretty cautious about what info he can and cannot share. Now, lucky for us, Brian is an experienced voice actor who knows his way around NDAs, having signed hundreds of them in the past. But when it comes to this game, he can only speak in vague generalities about what he knows, which means it's going to be up to us to read between the lines and speculate about what these clues could mean. Got it? Okay, good. Without further ado, here's my interview with Brian. Hello. Hello. But I just wanted to double check and make sure you're okay with the recording and all that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Great. Um, cool. Well, I, I almost don't know where to, to start. I think there have been little teases here and there. Um, but from the sound of things, it, it sounds like you've been spending some time in the studio revisiting a, a beloved, I guess not a character, but a beloved voice, a beloved tone of voice. So what can you, uh, do you have any updates for us? Like, what have you been up to? Oh, let me just say, first of all, I mean, I think you're the one who opened up, uh, Pandora's box and, uh, really, uh, got this going again. I think this is really exciting because it means that somebody somewhere at Sega uh, was made aware that you were out there in the world, that the original Monkey Ball announcer was still out there, that our quest to, to find you was fruitful. Um, and I, yeah, it's just exciting that they're bringing back the original Monkey Ball announcer. So what sort of lines have you been performing so far? Ooh, you detective you. You never stop, do you? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, I can, I can give you what I can give you without getting in trouble um okay rank one rank two rank three and of course go that one never goes away um yeah this was the new one we did two takes on this one advanced level one enhanced level one Interesting. Um, Advanced and enhanced. Now this caught my attention right away. Anybody who's played the original Monkey Ball games is familiar with the four difficulty levels, beginner, advanced, expert, and master, but enhanced was new. But before I could even begin to wrap my head around what this enhanced thing was, that was when Brian dropped another major bombshell. And I do remember we went into modes and uh, for example, um, retro mode five. Retro mode. Retro mode 4. Hang on a second. Retro mode? Retro as in classic Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 retro? 
Now, let's break this down. Putting aside the fact that calling the original Monkey Ball games on the GameCube Retro makes me feel insanely old, this is some incredibly exciting stuff. This retro mode would mark the first time Sega actually acknowledged the huge gap between what Monkey Ball used to be and what it eventually became. And the idea that there would be some sort of a throwback mode in a new Monkey Ball game is incredibly exciting to fans of the originals. The other thing was uh, the, the, the monetary or the point system. And it was quite, quite, quite interesting. It was like, um, uh, risk 100 coins, risk one gigabyte, risk five gigabytes, like this sort of thing. What on well. earth? That is, that is fascinating. I, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what that could possibly, uh, end up being. Oh, I know the, the other one was, um, this was really, <laughs> we didn't say this 20 years ago. Uh, they said, um, Oh, sad emoji. <laughs> what? I remember that one. What? Yeah. This yeah. is, I, are you sure this isn't a dream you had? This sounds so bizarre. <laughs> uh, no, this was not a dream. This was not a dream at all. Yeah. Wow. Sad emoji, happy emoji, excited. You know, like these kind of things. I, I, was it just a test or was it a take? Um, it's so nice we do takes, um, and they use it, like you said, or they don't use it. So I really don't have an idea on that one. Well, that is, either way, it is, that is fascinating. All right, so what about new characters? Well, listen to this. I, I know it always depends, like it varies project to project, but for this upcoming Monkey Ball project, have you seen any gameplay yet? Like, have you seen the game in motion or is it not that stage yet? Um, what I have seen so far, we had, um, uh, different like you know different parts that we had already recorded and there was some things like you know um doing some of the gamers some of the names now that we have like you know the, the roles and i remember um i'll be careful here okay blah, 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 blah. gamer go go and you know we had some additions there and so i could see what go go uh looks like um and i could they did a really nice presentation um and uh it's not the actual game itself it's just snippets of of footage that they've already uh completed or they've already designed so and bear with me because we're veering into rampant speculation territory here when Brian talks about the gamers, I, I think what he actually means is players, like play playable characters, okay? So when he says GoGo, -Go, what does GoGo -Go mean? Well, if we look at the naming conventions of other Monkey Ball playable characters, most of them fall into that two-syllable repeated sound pattern. I, I, Mimi, Gon Gon, Yan Yan, and so on. So personally, my theory, GoGo -Go is a new playable monkey being introduced in this game. And if we wanna get really speculative, Look at this picture Brian posted from the recording studio last week. At first blush, the image appears to be about what's on the TV, but if we look closely, Brian has actually drawn a monkey on the sheet of paper in front of him. Now, we know Brian has a penchant for dropping clues on Instagram, so you have to wonder, could this sketch be our first look at the character design for GoGo? -Go? Again, take that with a grain of salt, that is unabashed speculation from me, but that's my theory. Now, if you're like me, the most exciting part of this so far has still been the retro mode stuff, and as exciting as that is on its own, talking to Brian a bit more, it became clear that retro might not just be a mode in this new game, it might extend to the game's entire philosophy. And, and I guess lastly, I'm, do you have any idea what they might be thinking in terms of a name or a title for this game? Uh, let's see here. Script. I think they're going to actually go back to bringing the original and mix it with what we have now hmm. so i would just say stick with the good old days and we'll try to think of a a word that uh, <laughs> you could pick from the past i um bah, 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 bah. i think i might have already said one of the words already i have a feeling um a very very strong feeling um because there's no title call for it but i, I can just see as many times as i said it I, 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 they're not going to go numbers again because mm -hmm. the people that missed out 20 years ago, Monkey Ball, Super Monkey Ball 3, you know, while it's a good idea, you know, the hardcore fans like yourself understand that one and two were this and then everything onwards was 
and this. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, they're going to go with Super Monkey Ball and then one word, and it's not going to be a number. They need to have something that transfers over to um, over to Katakana. So I, I think that, I, and I don't know, you know, as far as the Japanese market, uh, I do know one thing that they've not uh, used any Japanese uh, narrators for this one, which is really interesting. That is interesting. All right, so let's switch back into speculation mode. What do we know about this title? We know it is not a number, so we can take names like Super Monkey Ball 3 off the table for now. We know that the title is one word, as in Super Monkey Ball colon blank. We know that it must be a word that can be easily translated into katakana for the Japanese audience. And lastly, and perhaps most crucially, it's a word that Brian has already said in this interview. Now that still leaves us with a lot of possibilities, but how can we narrow this down? Well, and this is the bit of detective work I think I'm proudest of, if we rewind back to when Brian pulls up that script in his own coy way and makes eye contact with the camera, if you look closely, we can just barely make out three katakana characters at the bottom of the screen. Re, To, and Ro. Now sound that out. Re, To, Ro. What does that sound like to you? Because to me, it sounds like retro. In other words, all signs point to the working title and perhaps the final title of this new Super Monkey Ball game, Super Monkey Ball Retro. Which to me says, this is a game about what Monkey Ball used to be. Now strap in, cause believe it or not, there's even more. First, let's quickly recap what we know. We know Sega is developing a new Super Monkey Ball game. We know that its working title seems to be Super Monkey Ball Retro. And we know that the game appears to be focused on recapturing the classic Super Monkey Ball gameplay that fans love best. Now, even knowing all that, there are still huge things about this game we don't know. I think most pressingly, what we don't know is, is this a remake or is this actually a brand new game with brand new content? Is it gonna be all old stages from the old games or is it gonna be all brand new stages? Now, if you'll permit me to speculate again for a second, my suspicion is that it's both. Personally, based on the title, my guess is that the main game is going to be brand new stages, while the retro mode is going to be remastered stages from Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe, and perhaps others. I mean, think back to the poll Sega ran last year. Virtually everybody who responded said they wanted either a remake of the first two games or a brand new Monkey Ball game. This concept, a new game with a mix of old and new levels, that would satisfy both of these fans at once. Think Sonic Mania, but for Super Monkey Ball. Now, once again, this is abject speculation. Nobody outside of Sega, including Brian, has seen actual gameplay from this game yet. But nonetheless, I, I gotta say, despite having never seen this game in motion, this whole project is unbelievably exciting. For more than a decade, Monkey Ball fans have been clamoring for a return to this classic gameplay style, and all the signs here seem to indicate that Sega has finally heard us and is setting out to make that exact game. Now, despite all the info we were able to glean from that interview with Brian, I still walked away with one major question. Who was at the helm of this project? Whether or not this game is any good will, in all likelihood, come down to who is producing and directing it. Well, the day after my interview with Brian, he still managed to toss us one last breadcrumb, once again via Instagram. After we spoke, Brian posted a screenshot from our interview with the description, quote, that part in the interview when you realize the detective at Babylonian snagged that info crying laughing emoji. Now the key is that beneath that, Brian tagged a bunch of names. Sega, Sega Games, Super Monkey Ball, Super Monkey, Aoni Production, Sony, Glohan Official, Chiro Sakim, and then some pretty complex kanji. Now those first four are obvious. I looked into the fifth one, Aoni Production, and found that they are a Japanese talent agency. The sixth name, Glohan, is the music producer who Brian recently befriended, who's behind Super Monkey Ball remixes that keep showing up on famous rappers' mixtapes like Lil Uzi Vert, Famous Dex, and more. You can catch my interview with Glohan up here, by the way. Now, Sony, I have no clue what that's doing on Brian's post. I guess he could be hinting that the game is coming to PlayStation, but from my conversation with Brian, I really didn't get the sense that the platform for this game has been decided yet. So it, it could be as simple as them recording the voice work at a Sony studio, who knows? Either way, it is inconclusive. But these last two names, these last two, man, they, these, for me, are the really exciting ones. 
Okay, first at Shiro Sakim or at Shiro Saki M. Now, if Shiro Saki M sounds a little bit familiar to you, think back to the beginning of this video. Remember the guy I told you about? The guy within Sega who oversaw that Banana Blitz remake and prefers the original two monkey balls? That dude's name was Masao Shirosaki. And sure enough, the name on the account, Shirosaki M, is Masao Shirosaki. Now, as for the kanji at the end, it is a name. A first and a last name. A man's name. And that name is Tashihiro Nagoshi. Now, anybody who watched my video about the downfall of Monkey Ball knows this name very well, but if you don't, Nagoshi is the creator of the Yakuza series, and more critically, he is the director of, and the creator of, the very first Super Monkey Ball game. Insanity. <laughs> This whole situation is a feel-good story for a ton of reasons. Not only are we getting our first real Monkey Ball game since 2012, and not only am I getting the honor of telling you about this game's existence, it really seems like this game involves both Monkey Ball's biggest champion within Sega, Shirosaki-san, and the prodigal son and co-creator of Super Monkey Ball itself, Nagoshi, who I think I can say on behalf of all Monkey Ball fans, Nagoshi, if you want to come back and start working on Monkey Ball again, we will welcome you back into the fold with open arms. I mean, these two guys among Sega's current roster of employees is basically the dream team of who you would want working on a new Super Monkey Ball game. But it's also a feel-good story because, dude, they brought back Brian Matt. Somebody inside Sega cares enough that they followed the story of our hunt for the original Monkey Ball announcer and pulled the strings necessary to bring him back into the fold. That fact, almost more than anything else, speaks volumes about the attention to detail Sega seems to be putting into this game. Bringing back this enthusiastic, enigmatic man to reprise the announcer role for the first time in 19 years. Like that, that is beyond fan service. Now the one thing I'm struck by every time I talk to Brian, between the first time we spoke in November, to the impromptu Skype interview we did last year, to this most recent conversation about this new game, the, th the thing I'm always struck by is his passion. I mean, at the risk of over-mythologizing Brian, he, he really is a sincere, warm, energetic guy, and it's genuinely touching to see how much he's embraced his newfound status as the voice of Super Monkey Ball. I'm really, really happy that you brought something up from 2001. Wish you all the best uh, with your subscribers and uh, also future visits to Japan. And as if that wasn't enough, <laughs> while I was recording this voiceover, Brian threw us one last morsel, a screenshot on Instagram that appears to be from the popular Japanese messaging app Line Messenger and the message reads as follows. Ganbare, Shirosaki-san. <laughs> We're all rooting for you. Thanks again to Brian for the interview. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, enjoyed this storytelling style, or you're just interested in Monkey Ball stuff in general, I invite you, please subscribe to this channel. This is just the beginning of my coverage of this game. Likewise, if you're interested in more Monkey Ball content from me, here are three Monkey Ball videos that I put a ton of effort into over the past year that I think you might enjoy if you made it all the way to the end of this video. But either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.